Spain. So this is courtesy of Sky Sports. Manchester United v Liverpool postponed after anti-Glazer fan protests at Old Trafford. So United were meant to play Liverpool yesterday. Uh, one of the biggest games of the season for either fans and for maybe football fans in this country all in. Whenever the fixture list comes out, that's one of the first things um, Man United fans or Liverpool fans sort of look for. Obviously a local derby in terms of, you know, respectively Man City and Everton, but also kind of playing your neighbours is also something that you kind of want to do. And considering the failed um, attempt for uh, both owners of Manchester United and Liverpool to join the European Super League, which would have effectively crumbled and destroyed whatever football period of it that we have now in, the, in this country that we hold dear and essentially, you know, created a walled garden of no consequences for these big major clubs to just continue making ha money hand over fist without really a need to improve the squad and all that sort of stuff going forward because that's basically a bit of a misnomer too. I, I have seen... I'm not seeing a lot of people, but I have seen some people who've defended the European Super League, more so in the sense of like saying, hey, this thing is inevitable. It's going to happen some way or the other, which is a fair. I understand that. I think we have a version of the Europe European Super League at the moment now with the Champions League, considering how certain countries get a certain allo allo allotment of um, teams in the Champions League, even though the, you know that country hasn't won a Champions League in, in a while. So th those things are obviously in play. And some leagues have their version of a European Super League. Look at the league and the discrepancy in money TV money that the top two clubs Real Madrid and Barcelona get compared to everybody else I think I heard someone say it's something akin to like you know Barcelona and Real Madrid get 250 million euros and then the rest of the La Liga get like 20 million euros so there's definitely a little bit of favoritism um, that's placed um, in some of these leagues and kind of you know benefit given to some of the bigger teams because they you know technically bring in the biggest viewers but then overall if you want to actually create a better balanced league and you want to recognize the contribution of all the other teams you probably should make it a bit more fair. But regardless, people are saying, you know, those things are going forward. But one of the misnomers I think about European Super League is this idea that because these teams are going to be getting, what, 400 million euros or 400 million or whatever it is, between 200 million to 400 million just to participate in the league year in, year out, which is not including whatever they're going to make from, you know, um, streaming their own games via their apps and websites the understanding is from some fans is that oh that money is going to go back into investing into the club and making us great again but uh, that's the issue the issue here is that with the system we have now at the moment teams are rewarded for finishing further up the table you know from fourth upwards teams are also rewarded for winning cups and trophies and so are you know the players that play for these teams and the managers it's sort of kind of incentive based to, you know to kind of add your name to the overall legacy of a club to create big moments for the fans but once you create the european super league there is no real um push and need for these clubs to reinvest that money into making the teams and squads better especially if you know there's already a few teams in the league already have a head start what's why would you go out of your way to kind of cripple yourself financially to get to a place where you can challenge for the league when it doesn't really matter that much because you can't get relegated so anyway um back to this protest so a lot of main night fans were really pissed off at that obviously considering what the glazers have done to the club you know taking out loans against the club putting us into debt you know taking out dividends and not really in you know investing in the team and the structure of the club of rural old trafford is dilapidated our training center is pretty crap and considering the amount of money we spent on transfers we don't necessarily have the most glitzy galactico you know laden team that you would ever imagine right because we spend a lot of money in transfers but we don't really spend it wisely you know we're a mismanaged club you know directionless we've only just recently hired a director of football after how many years in the doldrums and even that person seems like a little bit of a um, you know a little bit of a of a hire just to appease the fans for the time being not necessarily somebody that's the best in class as some people would say funnily enough Gary Neville hasn't really commented on the fact that this guy is just the dude that was already at the club for six or so years um, didn't really pull up any trees and now suddenly he's been given the helm of being director of football with Darren Fletcher assisting him who just the other day was you know running around cones and kicking balls back to players but we digress so um, I guess a section of the United fans decided to take this protest a step further and decided to do it during the Liverpool um, game and decided to kind of, you know, infiltrate the ground, go on the pitch, jump all over the nets, go in the changing room and just 
basically cause a ruckus to the point where the game had to be postponed and I'm here for it. I love it. I love to see it. I love the fans taking back some level of control from the owners and basically reminding them that they're custodians. Even though I was a bit negative and I was a bit bleak before, and I was thinking to myself, you know what, all these protests aren't going to do anything. These owners aren't going to leave. They're just going to bleed this club dry because they have to. Because why else wouldn't they? Um, they've, made, they've effectively purchased something so they can't be forced to sell it regardless of how bad of owners they are. I just feel like, you know, they've weathered, you know, levies and levies of kind of bad PR really, really easily without even batting an eyelid. So I don't see how this is suddenly going to make any difference. But I think the momentum of this and the fact that people are now waking up to how crappy of an owner um, the Glazers have been and the mismanagement of such a big and historic club like United, especially when you're going forward and seeing what other teams are doing in terms of putting their ducks in a row, we've definitely kind of seen that unless we get owners in who actually have an idea and a clue of what they're doing, we could be rudderless and kind of like without you know getting back onto our perch in any kind of meaningful way for a long long period of time especially when you realize just what all these other teams are doing in the league and also in europe so let's read through a bit of the article here it says um manchester United premier league game against liverpool old trafford was postponed following protests against the glazer family hundreds of the fans got into the stadium ahead of the behind the closed doors contest which was originally scheduled for fur free kickoff before being delayed then called off completely discussions are taking place around um finding a new date for the fixture um, two police officers were injured during the police um, silent demonstrations with one hospitalized after sustaining a significant slash wound to his face according to Great Manchester Police and again these are one of the things isn't it? this is sometimes protest if you are even send a message this is the only way you're going to send a message by actually causing a bit of ruckus you know maybe drawing some blood here and there and keeping it moving it's an unfortunate consequence of a protest I think this idea that protests are going to be you know polite and well mannered and you know just exactly abide by the rules don't necessarily um kind of heed to the history of protests and also they don't necessarily make the change effectively as you probably hope they would or kind of you know push it or kind of help to sway the momentum in any sort of meaningful way but this actually does and if you've seen some of the footage of the police engaging with some of the protesters you won't be too upset about someone slash getting their face slashed because i saw a video of a protest of a police officer punching a protester that's on the floor um clearly detained by two or three other police officers and punching with head or the back or something it was really disgusting to watch actually it continues it said united statement read following the discussion between the police the premier league the Trafford center council and the clubs our club match against liverpool has been postponed due to safety and security considerations around the protest today discussions will now take place with the premier league on the revised day of the fixture our fans are the passionate about man united and we completely acknowledge the right for free expression of peaceful protest however we regret the disruption of the team and the actions we put our fans and our staff and police in danger we thank the police for their support and we will assist them in their subsequent investigations and obviously you've got a video here of some of the protests let me play a bit of that hopefully I don't get taken Manchester down United, Manchester United have a rich history of ups and downs and uh, this was unprecedented even in the context of that what we saw here on the forecourt at so Old Trafford was sinister and it bit. was sinister go fuck yourself the covid breaches that they represented as well that's why okay uh, let's let's skip that sinister liverpool said that they were in full agreement with the decision to postpone and will continue to dialogue with Man united it's a position of public safety must be a number one factor in the such decision with the ability to provide a secure environment for the participants staff and officials being a particular priority said a club statement so yeah man like again i'm i'm, I'm here for it um the interesting thing is seeing some of the uh backlash from it you see some people basically saying, which I kind of agree with, but I'm not, I, I think it's fair, but also maybe not so fair. The whole like, oh, how can you be Glazers out by Oli in? It's kind of a big, a big kind of um, dividing line between United fans because unfortunately, for some reason, we are one of the most divided fan bases out there. And most of it has to do with players and managers. I don't know what is going on at the moment, but there seems to be some odd factions within the United kind of fan base, especially when you consider how big of a club we are and how successful we've been over the years. You, you would think that our fan base would just care about trophies and playing good football. They wouldn't necessarily care about who is the person coaching us at that moment in time. But it seems like there's a little bit, you know, there's some residue of Oli. There's, there's some Mourinho fanboys, some Lou Van Gaal fanboys even, right? There's some weird groups of factions of fans out there but some people basically say that how because Oli's gone out of his way which is a, a, a kind of precise statement to make Oli has gone out of his way to defend the Glazers and to sort of like you know 
throughout the up kind of you know be a supporting uh voice for them out there in the public people are basically saying that you can't be all glazers out if you're ollie in because ollie is basically a puppet of the glazers which i would ex accept for some extent i think for all our former managers ollie's probably been the most pro glazer i've ever seen maybe with the exception of david Moyes, who was obviously giddy that he got the job from everton in the first place but ollie's definitely gone out of his way to really make it known that he kind of supports what the glazer is doing with the club and he has actually no problem with them which is kind of ironic when you consider how vocal he was about their ownership beforehand and um, when he wasn't obviously the manager of united but as soon as he stepped into that big chair and he basically was given a job that he probably on paper shouldn't have never gotten um when you kind of look at his credentials and whatnot but obviously because of the good vibes of you know he basically was able to imbue in the club after the, the disastrous reign of Mourinho and during that interim period it made sense he was given a role don't get me wrong but I think as a big club looking at it you should have probably been a little bit more you know uh, cautious as to who you give the full-time role to going forward but now we know with the European Super League that United's intention was to always join a league that would basically allow them to be unambitious and allow them to not really be in it for footballing reasons it was always going to be a commercial thing so actually the odd thing is the fact that we're not in a european super league and people are pushing for new ownership this might actually put ollie's job in more danger than it was before because ollie's definitely going to be somebody that the glazer would love especially if he's able to prove um demonstrably now going forward that he's able to secure us top four football season in season out he's going to be the perfect kind he's be basically our version of arsene wenger right basically be able to turn top four into a trophy maybe pick up the odd domestic trophy here and there and just keep trucking along and that will mean sure we get the champions league money good tv rights money um good exposure in europe of course, of course continue that legacy um which you know they've players have no part in building blah 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 so it's a very interesting state of affairs that we're in at the moment do i agree can you be glazers in and ollie glazers out and ollie in not really i still think you can separate the two i still think you should cut ollie some slack because obviously he's working for these people he can't go out of his way and completely slate them but i do understand the fact that he has been a little bit too forgiving you know, i think the other day supposedly it was alleged he said something like oh joe glazer loves the club or something stupid like that and in response someone told him no he loves the dividends so there is obviously a concern about that but i think overall he is only doing his best right considering the position that he's put in is a bit awkward um i think it's helped obviously we're in a good league position people are not really pressing him that much but it is a bit odd that he kind of goes out of his way to defend the glazers so much it's not very really necessary but again game postponed we'll probably kick off another time but it's a good message sent to the glazers overall that we are not playing around that we're not playing around <laughs>